This evening we are in Serenby for a theatrical experience like none other. It is the Sleepy Hollow Experience. Um, as you can see, hopefully, we are in the middle of the woods at night, somewhere very far from our house. <laughs> Um, and we are going to see the tale of the Headless Horseman. Again, this is a, not a very um, traditional theater. In fact, there is no theater. It's just all staged throughout the woods where we will be traipsing amongst this torchlight until we encounter the Headless Horseman. But getting here in itself was kind of a fun experience, wasn't it, Tom? It was a very rocky off-road drive and then we parked uh, over a pretty tall grass. And literally on these dirt roads that you know the the divots were certainly yeah. wheel height so it was kind of a scary trip um it's kind of even scarier here in the middle of the woods at night um, but it looks like the show's going to start very soon there's some pre-show entertainment here um some characters walking around uh in funny english accents and there's a cash bar uh it looks pretty nice and they have some food, some concessions too. The popcorn smells amazing. I wish they had a caramel apple. I would be all over that. But, uh, you know, there's some games. It looks like there's a cornhole and uh, a ring toss. But uh, we're going to check it all out before the fun begins here any minute. <laughs> We hope you have a peaceful journey through the Sleepy Hollow experience. In the bosom of one of those spacious coves, which indents the eastern shore of the Hudson, at that broad expansion of the river denominated by the ancient Dutch navigators as the Tappan Zee, there lies a little valley among high hills known as Terry Town. Now this way, keep it coming. <laughs> Let's move it now. We get it, it's hot. Walk into the scary woods. <laughs> Precious cargo, right? <laughs> Hello. Hi there. What are you looking at? Keep moving. Hey, something funny to you. Keep walking. Hurry up! Lips are like a rose so fair With the prettiest face And the neat Well, for I'm a sleepy Do not let the parting grieve you Though the time has come for you And I must say goodbye Adieu, adieu, my friends, adieu, yes, adieu I can no longer stay with you, stay with you Oh, hang my heart on a weeping willow tree Fare thee well, fare thee well, fare thee well, fare thee well Clap! <laughs> All right, so even though this is a 50 minute show, there is an intermission um, and it looks like this is where the, they opened up the games and you can get your picture taken with the, uh, the actors and of course, get another drink at the bar. So what do you think so far, Tom? Uh, I like it. It's different. It's different than a regular um, indoor performance. So that's fine. You know, there's a lot of standing. Like the first act alone is like uh, maybe seating for 12 people. Um, and there are clearly like 100 or more people here. So it's a good thing we brought our sit goes um, so we can prop ourselves up and watch the performance. Um, so I'm a little disappointed in the lack of seating everywhere. I'm not surprised because I read the reviews ahead of time. There no I mean, if you didn't know that coming in, it could be a very uncomfortable experience, but we're having fun. We came prepared. So what did you think of the performances so far, Tom? It's hard for me to say because I was recording video. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like them. It's kind of cute. You know, there's like five characters and they kind of sing their little songs, I, which I'm assuming are, you know, um, what'd you say, original songs? Yeah. But, uh, you know, the actors are funny. They kind of break the fourth wall a little bit and talk to the audience. So 
entertaining. It's cute. I like it. We'll see where it goes. Ichabod did not make his appearance at breakfast. Dinner hour came, but no Ichabod. The rumor circulated that the schoolmaster had run off to become a judge or a politician or whatever. Stands, Thank you for attending the scene. <laughs> So the show just ended and we pulled um, out of the parking lot and pulled over to give you our first impressions of the show. Now if there's one thing, well first I guess before we get to the show is the parking. Um, you know, We kind of alluded to you're off in this sort of dirt grass field in the middle of nowhere but I think um, definitely their parking system could be a little bit better because they have you pull in and just everybody trying to back out when you're all crammed together, it was kind of um, nerve-wracking getting out. And I could tell that the person that we were parked in front of was getting very irritated, though we were taking a little bit of time to get out. Um, so God forbid we stopped and did our, our little video recap there, because I think they would have probably had our heads off. Yeah. I think you're sensitive because you're um, a former Disney college program. Oh, yeah. So you know how you know to manage good parking. But yeah, it could have used a little improvement. I think if they just had people back out or back in and park, it would be a little or, bit you know, easier. It's a giant field. They could have put more space between the cars. I mean, there wasn't, I mean, well, to kind of get back to the show a little bit, I think, you know, they had a little too many people. I, I don't know if they were trying to, you know, cram more people than normal in there. It's like I said at intermission, there's no seating. There, I mean, they had certain sections where they had seating for people, but not enough for everyone. So that kind of bothered me in, it, in itself. And not to give the show away, but at the end scene, um, unless you're standing in front, you might not see what you came to see. I was totally, totally disappointed. I mean, it, it is the climax of the show. In fact, it's you know the last section of the show, the last, um, what do you call it, act, I guess, is right after intermission. Intermission took forever because they, you know, want to make sure that they sell all their drinks so it was when the, the bar finally dies down and everyone gets their pictures with the cast and then the last act takes like what 10 minutes 15 minutes um, which of course everybody knows the end of the story it culminates on the sleepy hollow bridge where you get to see the headless horseman which is what i wanted to see well, but the way they set it up i mean obviously for safety they have to keep you away from the horse but they do it in a sense where like you're basically looking at the horse through a fence. And if you're not like right up against the fence, as I wasn't, I was in like the second row and there was even a row behind us. There's no way they would have seen. I could yeah. barely see. I mean, I could see something go past. I couldn't even tell that it was a headless yeah. horseman. I don't know. I read some reviews in advance and I sent you the links, but you didn't obviously didn't read them. No, I did not. <laughs> uh, so I knew that I had to stand in the front. So I made sure I was in the front. Well, I being the tall person that I am and the thoughtful person I, uh, that I am, I try and stay to the back so that the shorter people can be in front and can see. But uh, that kind of didn't work for me yeah. this time. Overall, I thought... Um, it was a fun show. It was outside. The weather was pretty good. Uh, it wasn't very hot, and there were no mosquitoes, uh, which was good. Yeah, I was a little worried about mosquitoes, especially since we had forgotten to bring them off, but yeah, it worked out well. And there was no, uh, it wasn't muddy or raining, um, and it was on grass, so I was worried about getting my shoes all dirty, uh, but it was good. I mean, the scenery, you know, just being out in the woods especially in a story like this, was amazing. I, I would give it an A-plus for atmosphere. And the acting, I thought, was really good, too. Uh, I thought, you know, all the actors portrayed their parts very well. Um, yeah, I thought, and also I thought, um, it, it, I heard, I read some complaints on some TripAdvisor or some other places that some people couldn't hear. 
but I can hear just fine. Um, there was uh, microphones and speakers, so you can hear pretty much everywhere, I think. But yeah, it's just the the views too. Mm -hmm. I mean, aside from not having enough seating, it's there were certain sections that like if you're not right in the right vantage point, you're gonna miss a lot of it. I mean, you have to listen to the show, but you don't come here to listen to a show. You come here to see a show. So I think it's it would be good for children too. I think it could be fun for kids to be out and there's hay bales and some games. Uh, it's different than a regular seated performance. I like that. Yeah, and they do do a daytime show um, and then two nighttime shows. So for the daytime shows, they're a little bit more kid-friendly. Yeah. I imagine the 2 o'clock show in Georgia would be sweltering in 90-plus degree <laughs> humid weather. So yes. the nighttime shows are probably more comfortable. And then, yeah, so there's... And they don't get the torches, the torch effects, right? Yeah. I mean, it had, they had very good lighting and lighting effects. I was very impressed with that. It's just as long as you get to see them, that's the big downside. So, I mean, up right up until the end, when I missed the entire Headless Horseman, I really enjoyed the show quite a bit. But it just fell apart right there at the end, and I'm going to go away with kind of a yeah. soured experience. Oh, it was amazing. He Tom got totally to see it. it. Uh, and thankfully he got some clips, so hopefully I'll get to see it later Maybe on we'll on you know the TV or when computer. Watch the YouTube video later. So, all right. So okay. Guess that's it for tonight, and I guess we'll see you around, guys. Until next time, take care. Happy, Happy haunting. haunting.